Jim motherfucking Jim Please find me on Twitter at Jen to the Den, and I'm also going to list all my social media down below so you can find me on all those different platforms. And I hope you are having a good day. Today I am going to continue the story of my ex-boyfriend that I call Tom. I think I've used that name a few times for a few different people in my videos. It's just an easy go-to name. Tom is not his real name. And the reason that I decided to call him Tom is because I found out he was peeping in windows after we broke up. I will link that video down below so that you can watch it and learn more about this nutcase. This story is about Tom and when we were dating and basically when we broke up. I said in my other video that Tom was one of the most jealous people, most insecure people I've ever met in my entire life, even up to this day. I think he was the most jealous and insecure boyfriend that I've ever had. Um, I will not say who the second one was. It was my second ex-husband. But anyway, very just worried all the time about what I was doing, who I was talking to, and I wasn't doing anything or talking to anyone in a way that I shouldn't have been. This guy was just super controlling and super jealous. I dated this guy for about three years, I think. It's kind of hard to remember, but I know I dated him a long time, and I know that I was unhappy for a lot of the time that I dated him. It was one of those situations where I was in high school, finishing out high school. I think it was my senior year and my first year of college and part of my second year of college. But I just, he was so controlling, but I didn't have very good self-esteem. And another thing is I just don't like hurting people. And so for the longest time, I kept dating him because I just simply didn't want to go through the bullshit of breaking up. I think a lot of people do that and especially a lot of young kids do that. I was not really happy during the time that we were dating. I mean, of course at first I was, but it got to the point where he didn't give me any room to breathe. I had no time to myself. He was extremely jealous of everything and everyone, and he never wanted to go anywhere or do anything. So all our dating consisted of was either me going to his parents' house where he lived or him coming to my parents' house where we live, and we would just sit and watch TV. And you know, that's real cool and all when you first start dating because you love each other so much, you don't really care what you're doing as long as you're together. But over time, that gets really old, and I just wanted to break up with him. So I remember that I broke up with him on December 10th. The reason I remember that so well is because it was right around Christmas time, and I just, you know it had to be bad if I broke up with somebody at Christmas time. I didn't want to do that to him, but the thought of being with him for one more day just made me want to vomit. And also I remember all of it because he acted like a fucking psychopath after we broke up. I remember when we broke up, I was like, you know, I just can't do this anymore, I'm not happy, and I just don't think we should see each other anymore. And he screamed at me on the phone, and he was like, that's fine! Fuck you! And like hung up on me. That day I was a little upset just because I was upset. I didn't want to hurt anyone and you know, I just was upset. But as time went on, dude just started acting crazier and crazier. The first thing he did to try to be around me was that he started befriending my sister. Now, my sister is five years younger than me and at this point in life, five years is nothing. But when my boyfriend and I broke up, I was a teenager and my sister was five years younger than me. And with that being said, he was about two years older than me. So he was about seven years older than my sister who was like maybe just getting ready to go to high school. He started befriending her, like calling her on the phone. Back then Nintendo was really popular. We played video games all the time, my sister did. And he started coming to the house to trade video games with my sister. I thought that was very strange. I'm sure my parents thought it was very strange. They were very hands-on, so they were watching the situation. It wasn't sexual in any way. It was just that he was just trying to be friends with her so that he would have a reason to come to my house. And I remember there were several different nights that he came by to trade video games with my sister and I would just like stay down in my room and not come out. One time he did catch me like walking through the living room and he was just standing in the living room just like looking at me and I remember just feeling really weird about it. After a little bit of time he stopped doing that but he kept coming to the house and putting notes in the door and it was like freaking me out and it was freaking my sister out because a lot of times my parents would go out at night and we would be there like by ourselves or maybe my sister would be the only one at home and you would hear the screen door on the front door kind of creak open 
and then he would put a note in there and then he would like run off. He wouldn't park in the driveway or anything. It was really weird. He would show up wherever I was. I think he just rode around and looked for my car because back then all we did here in town where I live is hang out in different parking lots or hang out at different fast food restaurants and he just seemed to always find me and want to talk and like I wasn't strong enough to be like, no, I'm not going to talk to you. So I would end up sitting in his car while he was like bawling and crying and stuff. And I would just be like, I'm sorry, but this is another example of why I broke up with you. Because you're just so fragile and just, I can't do this anymore. Like you're acting like a psychopath. But it got way worse. Through high school and part of college, I worked at a real estate office. I was like a secretary and also a person who just ran errands and stuff like that. Mostly I answered phones and typed up stuff. Tom, my ex-boyfriend, who I don't think he ever graduated college. I know that when we were dating, he was in college, but he like didn't go to his classes like he was supposed to and stuff like that. He never really had had a job besides like working at the grocery store, bagging groceries and stuff like that. He started coming to the real estate office and putting up the front that he was looking for an apartment. I knew that he wasn't looking for an apartment, but I didn't know what to do. Like I should have told the people at the real estate office, that's my ex-boyfriend, like he's only coming in here so he can be around me and he's not going to buy an apartment or rent an apartment. But at that time, I just felt like I couldn't say anything, and I didn't. So he kept coming and pretending that he was going to rent an apartment. He had a realtor actually going out and showing him apartments. Like, he was wasting their time, money, resources, all sorts of stuff. One of my jobs at this place was to go to the post office every day. So one day, I went out in the parking lot of the real estate office to get in my car and go to the post office, and he was out there. It was only a few weeks after I broke up with him because he had my Christmas present it was wrapped and he tried to give me my Christmas present and I was like I don't want that I really appreciate it but I don't want whatever that is just please take it and go I'm at work well he just became enraged just enraged I remember him grabbing me by my arms and like just dragging me around the parking lot it was gravel and I remember I was dressed like in a skirt and stuff for work and he's just like dragging me around in the gravel and I'm like screaming and crying and telling him to get off of me leave me alone finally I got free of him and I got in my car but I had to back out of my parking spot and he was standing behind my car just holding on to my car. So the only way I could have pulled out was to run over him. This was back before you had cell phones or anything because if I would had a cell phone I would have called inside the office and told them to come out and help me. But instead I just got out of the car and like ran to the door. And when I got inside one of the realtors was in there and I was crying and carrying on and she's like what is going on? And I told her, I was like, Tom is out there. He's only been coming here because he's my ex-boyfriend. He's not going to rent an apartment. He's just coming in here so he can see me and annoy me and he won't let me leave. And the lady who owned the real estate office, she ended up going outside and talking to him and telling him he had to leave. I told my mom that day about what he was doing and what he had done that day. She got very worried. She told me to park my car in the garage and she said, do not answer the phone and I'm going to handle this. So from what I understand, that day she called him and told him that he was not to come near me, he was not to call me, he was not to write to me, he was not to go anywhere where he knew where I was and I was told that if I was somewhere and I saw him I had to leave. He still didn't leave me alone after that. I feel like he called the real estate office one day and of course I answered the phones a lot and it was him. And at that time I had just started dating someone else. So I started dating this guy that I met on New Year's Eve of that same year and I remember Tom called, I think it was at work and I answered and I just basically said something like, you need to leave me alone, my mom has told you to leave me alone and my boyfriend is getting pissed. And there was dead silence on the other end of the phone. It seemed like it went on forever and then finally he was like, I did not know you had a boyfriend. I will leave you alone. And I was like, great, hung up the phone. Not too long after that, I wanna say maybe a few months, I heard that Tom was dating someone else and I was over the moon ecstatic about that. Very happy that he was dating someone else. Now, what I am about to say may turn some people off, but I don't know any other way to be except just blatantly honest and tell how I feel about things, so here we go. The girl that he started dating was kind of trashy and not the kind of pretty cheerleader slutty kind of trashy. She was just like... She was the same age as me and I guess she had a hard life because she was living by herself in a trailer over by a bunch of convenience stores and I had heard that he was basically living with her. I did not care. I cannot stress that enough. But 
this is a guy who never wanted to go anywhere or do anything, which was part of the reason I broke up with him. Me and my new boyfriend, Robert, which is not his real name, let's just call him that, we like to go out and we would go just to the different places around here, which there's not really that much to do here, but one of the places we would go, they would have karaoke. And this was back when karaoke was a new thing. And we would go to this place and my mom and dad would go and I mean, it was just a lot of fun. All my friends would go and we would do karaoke. Well, damn if Tom and his white trash, Becky didn't show up. I, I'll get a lot of shit for that. I don't care. That's what I'm gonna call her White Trash Becky. So Tom and White Trash Becky show up to this place and I was just like, that's weird. He never goes anywhere or does anything. And I know he was just simply there to like try to piss me off and to rub in my face that he had a girlfriend, but it didn't work because I didn't care. So all I remember about that night is just having a lot of fun, singing a lot of karaoke, and drinking a lot of drinks. When that bar shut down, Robert and I went to the truck stop to have breakfast. Damn if Tom and White Trash Becky and her best friend, let's just call her Sheila, damn if they didn't come into the truck stop. And I'm just like, is this a joke? Like he doesn't do any of these things. And if he thinks that I don't know, he's doing this just to annoy me. I loved Robert. Like Robert was a really good boyfriend to me and I was very happy. So I did not care what Tom and White Trash Becky and Sheila were doing. We finished eating breakfast and we were standing at the counter to pay for our food. And White Trash Becky and her best friend Sheila walks by me. And one of them kind of brushed up against me, but it was just close enough where it wasn't like she really bumped me, but at the same time, like I felt her brush up against me. And they were walking really slow. And White Trash Becky says to Sheila, You know that guy, Tom? And Sheila goes, Who? And Becky goes, Tom, I think he's gonna ask me to be his girlfriend. And Sheila was like, Oh, that's nice. And like they kept walking and they went in the bathroom. It shouldn't have bothered me, but at that point of the night, I had been drinking, I was tired, I was drunk. And these bitches had basically been like in my face all night in one way or the other. So I remember just like storming off to the bathroom. And Robert's like trying to grab my hand, but he wasn't fast enough. And I got to the bathroom and I like slammed the door open and I was like, fuck both of y'all bitches. And I remember they just stood there looking at me like they were in shock. They didn't know what to do. And at that point, Robert had come into the bathroom, grabbed me by my arm and pulled me out. And he was like stuffing me in the car when both of them came outside. That was that. I was just like, I said what I had to say, that's it. And I didn't see them for a while until one night we were out at this place and it was called The Bakery because it used to be a bakery, but they turned it into a nightclub. But me and Robert were at the bakery and like a bunch of friends were there. And as usual, the guys were standing around talking and the girls were dancing in a circle. And the floor wasn't really that crowded. There wasn't that many people there yet. It was kind of early. And I'm dancing and I see Tom and White Trash Becky and Sheila and then this other thing walk in. I'm probably gonna get so much hate for this video because of the way I'm describing these people, but this is the only way I know how to describe it. There was a girl and let's just call her Butchie <laughs> because she was as big around as she was tall and she had one of those like asymmetrical haircuts and like she talked like this and she did this a lot and like she had part of her eyebrow shaved and like several tattoos and just not not an attractive girl and I'm dancing with my friends and I see them come in and I'm like fuck there's Sheila and Tom and fucking white trash Becky then I see that they've got this other girl with them butchie so I'm dancing with my friends I'm doing my best like to just not even look at them and I'm dancing and all of a sudden I just look and butchie is standing right next to the dance floor she's like this And I'm like dancing and I'm just like trying to ignore her, but she's like. So finally I look at her again and she's like. Like motioning me toward her, like beckoning me to her. And so against my better judgment, because at that point in my life, I didn't handle conflict well. Now I would be like, the fuck you, bitch. I don't know who you are. But against my better judgment, I walked up at the music slide and I'm like looking at her. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? And she's like, you got a problem? You got a problem with my friend Becky? And I was like, no. She's like, that's not what I heard. That ain't what I heard. I heard you call her a bitch. I heard you told her, fuck you. I was like, um, yeah, I did. But that was like a few weeks ago and I was drunk and she was instigating shit. So who are you? I'm sorry. Who are you? 
Why are you talking to me about this? And just like right over her shoulders, off a safe distance, you see white trash Becky and Sheila. And then you see Tom like looking at me. And I'm like, really? Y'all sent like the white trash Gestapo to come over and talk to me about this? Like, leave me alone. You, you're crazy. So I was just like, no, I don't have a problem with them. I said what I had to say the other night. They were instigating it. Like if they'll leave me alone, I'll leave them alone. Tom is crazy. I broke up with him. I don't know if he told white trash Becky that. But he basically stalked me for a while and he's fucking pissed because I have a new boyfriend. I don't care anything about any of you people. Just leave me alone. Well, I ended up telling Robert about it. I ended up telling the guy who owned the bakery about it. And every time I would turn around that night, Butchie was like right near me. The guy that runs the place, he was like, just ignore them. You know, if anything happens, come let me know. But not Robert. Robert was a good boyfriend. And Robert took up for me a lot. And I remember he went over to talk to Tom to find out what the fuck his fucking problem was. And Robert was like leaning across the table talking to Tom. And Tom just looked like he'd seen a ghost because Tom was a fucking pussy. Never been in a fight in his life. And Robert was like from the army, had been a bouncer at a nightclub, all this stuff. And so white trash Becky comes up to me and she's like trying to talk to me. She's like, I don't know what your problem is. Like, I don't have a problem with you. And I was like, well, that's not exactly how I perceived things to be. When y'all seem to be just wherever I am, y'all show up. You go out of your way to try to irritate me. You walk past me and say shit when I'm minding my own business. Like, I don't know what your problem is. I broke up with Tom, so I don't want your boyfriend. I don't know if he told you I broke up with him, but I did. She's like, yeah, he told me that. He told me everything about how he acted and everything. And I'm like, and you still voluntarily date him? Like, even he's acting like that over me still? Like, none of this makes sense to me. I just happened to look over her shoulder, and Tom is sitting there just giving me the death stare. And I just looked at him, and Robert was still sitting at the table, like, talking to him. And he looked at me, and I looked at him, and I was just like, Ugh. like, basically, like, what is your problem? And at that point, he flipped me off. Just like Ass Clown in Walmart, Tom flipped me off while Robert was sitting right there. And I was just like, the fuck? So I flipped him off. When I did that, he jumped up from his chair like he was getting ready to charge me like a bull. I mean, the hatred and just, he had such a look on his face, I thought he was going to kill me. He jumped up and when he jumped up, Robert jumped up and basically like clotheslined him and pinned him down on the floor. And the next thing I know, we got kicked out of the bar. All of us got kicked out of the bar for fighting. I guess all it took was for Robert to clothesline Tom, for Tom to realize that he needed to leave me the fuck alone. Because after that night, he never messed with me again. White Trash Becky and Sheila and Butchie never messed with me again. Basically, I was stalked and punished because I had the audacity to break up with someone. So if you're in a relationship where you want to break up with someone, I have no magical cure for you. I have no perfect answer for you. The only thing I can tell you is that you have to bite the bullet and do it. If you're in an unhappy relationship, why drag it out? There's like no reason good enough. I mean, I dragged mine out for stupid reasons like, oh, we're going to this concert in two months, so I can't break up with him now. And then the concert would be over and I'd be like, oh, but you know what? His birthday's coming, so I can't break up with him now. Oh, the prom's coming. I can't. It doesn't matter. If you're unhappy, break up with someone. And if someone begins to stalk you, then you need to tell people that it's happening. You need to take as many pictures as possible. You need to record as many phone calls as possible. Do not delete text. Do not delete emails. Do not delete any of that stuff. Get a notebook. Write things down. When did you see him or her? What are they doing? What places did they show up? It's important to document all that stuff and you need to reach out and tell someone who cares about you what is going on because I really don't know what Tom would have done to me. I think probably nothing but he acted like a crazy person. I tell these stories and I'm like it's no wonder I just don't want to date anybody or be in a relationship ever again. But anyway, guys, that was my story for the day. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope maybe you learned something. Hope maybe it helped people. So please give it a thumbs up if you would. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you have, thank you so much. If you are subscribed, please click the little bell icon down below so that it will tell you every time I put up a new video. I put up videos on Tuesdays and Saturdays. So come back and join me next time and I will see you then. I love you. Bye. And I was getting ready to go and I was like packing up my bags and everything and I was getting ready to leave the house and when I was leaving my dad was like So you gonna stay at Pam's house tonight, huh? And I was like, yeah. He's like, what are y'all gonna do? I was like, the regular stuff, just like watch TV and all. He's like, I watch TV. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I don't know what 
why why are you questioning me like this this is weird